Good morning, good morning, good morning. And let all of God people say, Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, it's Sunday, such a glorious day. We will rejoice and be glad because God has made this day especially for us to enjoy. Evangelist Canada, how are you this morning? Thank you, love, for getting the music and you tuning in and for your continued support. Evelyn William Pee Wee William Dot Don and Antonisa on this morning. How y'all this morning? Uh, Sister Pee Wee Dot, how you this morning? Antonise, God bless you. Dot Tara, Dr. Badger with us this morning. Good morning, Katrina. And how are you, my father's children? Amen. Denise Brenda Dunlap in Chicago, Bob Hibbler, and others are watching with this morning. Stephanie Calhoun, good morning. Mother Ida May Calhoun, how you this morning? Jenkins, Major Judy, Major and Judy Conway with us. Cookie, how you doing, daughter? Amen. Lord, 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 have mercy. Chastity Whalen, how is Grandma Gladys doing this morning? Amen. I think that's you. Good morning to all. Gloria Whitney, how you doing from um, Nashville? Chief Dishman, you and Claire, uh, Brother George Goodman, Lynn Moore, how you doing? Amen. Go ahead and share this message with, with your friends, your family, and with your network. Amen. What's happening in the loop, Pee Wee? Amen. All right. Let's see if we get some music. I uh, see Leonard Conway, Michelle Conway. Leonard, happy birthday to you. Barbara Dye, how you this morning? How you doing, little brother? All right there. How old are you this morning there? Amen. Let's see if we got some music. Luther Barnes. All right. The Red Bug. Gospel Choir. Sharon Hodges, how you this morning? Uh, let's see what Luther Barnes is singing. See what the Lord has done. Amen. See what the Lord has done. Let me get some sound here. Let me know how my volume is. Luke the Burn, see what the Lord has done. Amen. All right. To God be the glory. God is good. Morning, Doc ba Badger. Doc Tara, how you this morning? Love you very much. How's Brother Jenkins there, Sister Calhoun Jenkins? Is there surgery this week? Cat Hayes Smith, how you doing, Mother Cat? Callie D. Doretha, how you doing? Chicago. Count your many blessings. See what your Lord has done. Karen and Jonah, how you this morning? Karen Archer, how's Mark and Bree and the family? Emma. See what the Lord has done. You count your many blessings. How many of you know God is good all the time? Okay, Dr. Palmer tomorrow. All right, we're praying that everything goes well for him, uh, Brother Jenkins. Courtney, how are you this morning? All right, you got the prayer list? Go ahead and type them in the comment box, those prayer requests. Oh, yes. See what the Lord has done. Did he wake you up this morning, Tanisha? How you and Layla doing there? Oh, yes. He woke me up this morning. Leandra Moe, how you modern? How you this morning? Sister Estrick, Willie May, how you this morning? God bless you. Bob says she got too many blessings to count. Well, just thank him anyway for the many blessings. Praying for the Keys family. Mother Thaddeus, Ruby Thaddeus, how you this morning? Good morning to you. Gave you food to eat. See what the Lord has done. Can't count them all. Let's see. Let's go by our, our prayer list there. Josh Love, how you doing? Glad you could tune in there. I'll catch a broadcast sometime. Keep on doing God's work there. Got digging Bobby Bond. Uh, he's back home from the hospital. Deborah Hayes. Lost her son, Dante Hayes. Amen. Digging Adam Bond. Pastor J.C. Smith. Beverly Clark. Brother Clyde Jenkins. 
praying for Carolyn Steele and her family there, Stanisha and the Love family, the Underwood family, the Smith family, Franklin family. Amen. Thera Bullock, Clyde Jenkins, Mother Dar Lowry, Mother Lori Hubbard, Mother Catherine Smith, Mother Eunice Thomas, Mother Miss Arthur, Mother Arthur Jones, Mother Marjorie Hibbler, Mary Stewart, Major Conway, Melvin Conway, William Conway, praying for you too, Judy, Judy, Ernestine Webb, Charles William, Curtis Seller, uh, Debria Brooks, Diane Miller, Roy Dodson, uh, the family of Melana Turner, the family of Eugene Jernigan, the McKay family, the Bland family, praying for the United States, uh, incoming President Joe Biden and Kamala uh, Harris, praying for Pastor Nelson, amen, and his recovery, amen. Any other, pray, we, pray for us, we schedule for our vaccine on Thursday, and I encourage each of you to get your vaccination. Amen. Okay, birthday. Helen Conway, Leonard Conway, and Dee Barnett celebrating birthday. All right. Keep our nation in our prayer. We're going through. We ask you to keep your eyes on the vaccine. Vaccine. Make sure you sign up. Be mindful of your surroundings. We pray that you stay fast, masked up, and you stay safe. Amen. Chuck William, Charles, how you doing, brother? Down there in Georgia. Say you're feeling much better. How about Debria? How's she doing there? Amen. Amen. Pandemic going on now. Cook the house, everything out at the Ponderosa. Amen. All right, Dr. Don. Okay. I'm going to back this up. Let's have some more there. Y'all don't mind if I back this up, find my cursor, and let me back this. Let's start this over before we pray. All right, now we. Demetrius burned it. All right, birthday. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank and praise you for life, for health, and for strength. So much to be thankful. We realize, Lord, that we just don't thank you enough. So we lift up a holy hand and praise your holy and your righteous name. Come now, Lord Jesus, with mercy and grace. You heard the prayer list, Lord. God, even though you already knew it, it's long. And it increases day by day. So much evilness, so much hatred, so much sickness, so much death, so much love. We pray for all those on the list, Lord God, that we call. Then we pray for the unspoken request, Lord God, for safety. To keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. We pray for those that celebrating birthday. We pray for those that celebrating anniversary. We pray for Ben uh, uh, Rowe's son and, 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 and the family. We pray that to keep them safe, Lord God. We pray that to keep on blessing us. We pray for Ben and Robertson and, and, and family. Lord, the show been blessing us. And we're going to lift up holy hand and praise your holy and your righteous name. We pray for a word from on high for these thy people that they may feel the glory of the coming of the Lord. Now bless us and keep us. We pray that all that we do and all that we say be pleasing in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He healed his body, mind, gave me food to eat. Preacher Hardeman, how you doing, preacher? God bless you. Amen. Grace Stevens out of Knoxville, how you doing, Sister Grace? God bless you there. Gave you food to eat. See what the Lord has done. Chris there, A.K. All right, everybody had found today, the Delta, the AKAs, and the Zeta. All y'all beautiful so raw sister we congratulate you on your on your uh, founder they keep on doing what you're doing serving god and it will pay off after a while how many of you been sick in your body and god heal your body jehovah rapha god my healer what he do for you heal this body of mine Yes, Lord. God bless you. God said, so love said she loved that gospel music. Yes, he healed his body of mine. Not on a, I, I bought a whole family. Just about all of us had COVID, but God brought us through. Pastor Lanier, thank you. Wonderful word, wonderful testimony how God brought you through. Pneumonia and the COVID there. Amen. God bless you, Mother Cat. Amen. 
Norma Westbrook, how you doing, sister? Stephanie Calhoun, how you doing? Pam Harris, God bless you. Thank God for the hearing. Shelvin Wright, our niece down in Florida, how you doing? All right, all the family on. We got quite a few brothers and sisters on this morning, family, nieces, and nephews. God bless you, dear. To heal this body of mine. All right. Count your many blessings. Okay, tomorrow the holiday. We celebrate Martin Luther King Day. Amen. We're going to preach about that this morning. All right. How you doing, Miss Westbrook? Where your partner in crime, Miss Jones? Amen. Okay. All right. Luther Barnes, see what the Lord has done. Count your many blessings, Pam, and see what the Lord has done. All right. We're going to end it right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture this morning come out of Deuteronomy chapter 32. We're still talking about Moses. We're going to continue our series on Moses for a little while. But tomorrow as we celebrate uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, all right, we're going to see if we can tie these two, uh, two topics, these two things together. Moses and as we celebrate Martin Luther King from a Moses perspective. All right. Scripture, Deuteronomy, chapter 32, starting at verse 48, I think down to 52. All right, these words are recorded. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abraham, and unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession and die in the mount whither thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy father, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because you transgress against me among the children of Israel at the water of Meribah Kadash, in the wilderness of Zen, because you sanctified me not, did not give me the glory in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. Amen. That 32nd chapter of Israel, at thought in verse number 48, that describes Moses' mountaintop experience. That's what we want to preach about, the mountaintop experience. The mountaintop experience. Well, God told him to go up to Mount Nebo, the crest of the mountain, and the crest is the part of the mountain where you can see all around. And, uh, uh, the, the vantage point, you can see everything, all right, around. Damien, all right, how you doing this morning? Okay, so he told Moses to go up in the Mount Nebo and you're going to die there, all right? Because when you was in Meribah Kadash, you didn't, you disobeyed me. I told you to speak to the rock and you smoked the rock. All right. So Moses was told that he was going to die up on Mount Nebo. Now, God gave him the privilege. Marilyn Young organizer, how you this morning? How you the family there? How my baby girl doing? Tell her I say hi. All right. God gave Moses the privilege to doing this mountaintop experience to peep over and see the promised land, all right? But he was told that he would not be allowed to enter therein. Now, tomorrow, we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the third Monday in the month of January, MLK Jr. Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, all right? Now, Martin King, his last message, his last sermon, his last speech, was given on April 3rd, 1968, that night at the, the Mason Temple in Memphis. And his last, uh, this last sermon, this last speech was entitled, I've been to the mountaintop. MLK, like Moses, had had his mountaintop experience. Now, mountains in the Bible, mountain symbolizes nearness and closeness to God. 
the mountaintop is experienced is when and where you experience the glory and the and, and the peace of God. Okay, spread game Jesus. How you doing this morning? Whoever that is, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. All right. The mountaintop experience, where, all right, and when you experience the glory and the peace of God. All right, share this message, please, with your friend, family, network. Have my question this morning to you is have you had your mountaintop experience? Have you experienced the glory and the peace of God in your life? Earl Dennis, Curl and Earl, how are you this morning? Amen. The mountaintop experience, where you experience the glory and the peace of God. Last time we talked about the burning bush experience, where you come in contact with God, where you meet God, where you turn aside and see God. All right. Today, the mountaintop experience, where you experience the glory, the joy, and the peace of God. All right. Now, MLK, Martin Luther King, last sermon borrowed from Moses' mountaintop experience on Mount Nebo. There has been much comparison between uh, Martin Luther King and Moses and their mountaintop experience uh, uh, since King death in 1968. All right. Moses, and let us look at some of these things that they share in common. Moses and Martin Luther King both were called by God and sent to deliver God's people from slavery. Moses, it was physical slavery and oppression by the Egyptian. Martin Luther King, people suffer from spiritual and mental uh, a slavery and oppression. All right. So they both were sent to deliver the people from God and give them a form of freedom. All right. That the constitution allowed. Both Moses and Martin Luther King had to be content. I had to contend rather had to contend with the government. <coughs> Mr. Richard Conway Patterson, how you doing this morning? You're not too late, Richard. We're just getting started. We're talking about the mountaintop experience, comparing Martin Luther King and Moses' experience that they had on the mountaintop. All right. Both of them, Martin Luther King and Moses, had to contend with the government. Moses had to contend with a hard-hearted, stiff-necked Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Martin King had to uh, uh, contend and, and challenge the U.S. governor and the Jim Crow segregation laws designed to keep us oppressed and in spiritual and mental slavery. Thank you, Evangelia Candidate. It, it's never too late. Long as there's breath in the body, it's never too late. And so they were, had to contend with wicked and hard-hearted government. Now, both Moses and Martin Luther King led their people to the promised land. <clears throat> Moses marched around the wilderness from place to place, going in circle for 40 years. Martin Luther King marched throughout the streets of America seeking justice for uh, not just the black people, but for all people. Yeah, there's been much comparison to their mountaintop experience. Both Moses and Martin Luther King were denied entry into the promised land. My, my, my. Think about this. And, 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 and many may struggle with this. All right. Leading the people, both Moses and Martin King leading the people to the edge, to the brink, to the boundary, to the state line, if you will, of the promised land and being denied access to take the people on into the land. They died, both died on the edge of the promised land. And it, that might seem a little harsh, all right? 
But understand that Moses had disobeyed God and not given him the honor and the glory. He was denied that. There's no indication that Martin Luther King did anything contrary to God's will, but God had designated him for one plight. Natasha, one of we're praying for you. How you doing this morning there? All right. Both led the people through marches, through the wilderness, through the street. All right. Evilness beset them everywhere. But they kept on going. They kept on trucking. They kept on marching. And they were denied access to the promised land. How you this morning, Tasha? All right. Now, my, my, my. <clears throat> Isn't that hard? Isn't that hard to understand for some of us to understand and, and, and come to grip with? All right. Talking about the promised land and the valley. You see, the valley, we, we understand the mountaintop. All right. The mountaintop symbolizes the nearness and closeness to God. Kevin Dawson, KD, how you doing? The valley. It's the preparation field, all right? In the Valley Experiment, the world is the preparation time for a new vision from God. All right. Okay, the challenge for us is to take the mountaintop experience down into the valley. We are to let our little light so shine that others may see our good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. You have no light unless you've been to the mountaintop and unless you have experienced the glory of God. Have you been to the mountaintop? All right, we talked about this comparison between Moses and modern king and we went over some of these things. The mountaintop experience that they both had, they were allowed, my, 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 to peep over and see the promised land. All right. And, and they saw the promised land with the blessing assurance from God that the people would enter into the promised land. We're talking about the mountaintop experience. Have you had your mountaintop experience? Have you been to the mountaintop? let alone seeing the promised land. Uh, 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 we won't hold you too long, but allow us to lift these fruit points uh, 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 and to, to close this message. Egypt, Eden, and the empty land. Egypt, Eden, and the empty land. Egypt, all right? Wherever you live in this country, all right. Wherever you live in this world, it is probably Egypt. There, William, glad you could tune in. God bless you. Wherever you reside, wherever you make your bow, all right, you probably live in Egypt. Egypt symbolized the evilness and oppression and oppression of this world. All right. America is a spiritual Egypt. All right, cat. <laughs> Got three, just three points this morning. America is a spiritual Egypt. Even though we're living in this great country, we are living spiritually in Egypt. Prejudice. All right, so much prejudice and, and hatred, discrimination, racial hatred, poverty, hunger. Folks not have enough food to eat, standing in line for hours and hours just to get a, some food to try to feed their family. Yes, Dr. Tara, they went to the promise, to the top of the mountain. They saw the promised land, but they were denied access. So much killing, disease, riding, insurrection. Folks trying to take over the government. My, my, now. We need a deliverer to save us, to lead us out of the valley of despair into the promised land. So 
Egypt, we living in Egypt. Just look around you. All this killing, all this disease, the, the virus that's rapid. In, in LA, California, every individual dies every six minutes now. My, my, my. We need to pray for this country and the incoming administration. Pray for all those evil folks. Yes, America, the great country, is a spiritual Egypt, which symbolizes evilness and corruptness, oppression and slavery. We may not, many are not, we are not in slavery, but many still have the slave mentality. Many of the children of Israel still had the grasshopper mentality, that everything is bigger and better than them. So even though there is a spiritual Egypt, there also is a, spir a spiritual Eden. Egypt symbolizes everything that is bad. Eden symbolizes everything that is good. Lord Wayland, how you doing? I'm here to tell you that there is a better place. Whether you call it Utopia, Utopia Shangri-La, the Garden of Eden, Paradise, there is a better place. Uh, 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 Moses called it the Promised Land because it was promised to the descendant of Abraham. A land that flowing with milk and honey. That means the land of plenty and progress. The land of opportunity. We are on our way to a, a better place. My, my, my. The, the songwriter said, don't you want to go to that land? There's joy in that land. There's peace in that land. And we'll see Jesus in that land because we have a savior in that land. The promised land, the Eden. Everything that's wrong with Egypt is everything that's right with Eden, the promised land. All right. Joe Kelly, how you doing? Praying for you. Thanks for watching there. Are you on your way to the promised land? All right. Now, all right, the spiritual Egypt, all the wickedness, all the evil, all the hatred, all the poverty, all the killing, all the disease that this country have us going through, the spiritual Egypt, all right? Then the Eden, the better place, the promised land, land flowing with opportunity. And Martin King said, you're not judged on the color of your skin, but the content of your character, everything that is good, the promised land, what God promised us. He already promised us there is a land, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, let's talk about that empty land. The empty land is the wilderness. My, my, my. The way to the promised land is through the wilderness. My. Understand this, the way to the promised land is through the wilderness. The wilderness, the land of lack, lack of food, lack of shelter, lack of uh, a safe and affordable housing. Now, lack of health, lack of love. In this country, the greatest country, all the wealth that it has, we are in the wilderness because of disobedience. Forty years in the wilderness for Moses was a long, long time. Well, so much similarity between the slavery of the Israel nation and the African-American folk. Both were down in Egypt for 400 years. The Israel was in physical slavery for 400 years. African-American, Negro, Black, and other was in slavery over 400 years. And just like the children of Israel, when the physical slavery had passed, folk were still in a mental state of slavery. They were still, many folks are still in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. Both Moses went to the mountaintop just like Martin Luther King, they had their mountain 
top experiences where they experience the glory and the peace of God. They experience the joy of God. This peace that passes all understanding, the joy that the world can't understand. Everything that's going on that you still got joy. No food on the table. You still got joy. Don't you want to go to that land? There's joy in that land. There's peace in their land. You see a lot of things happen up on the mountain top. On the mountain top, they experience loneliness. They were there all by themselves. Yeah, on the mountain top, they experienced dying. Both died on the mountain top before they could reach the promised land. But both made their decoration up in the mountain top, and it was all right with them. Yeah, they thank and praise God that they were allowed to reach in, to look over and see the promised land. And they made their declaration. Martin King made his declaration that April 3rd in the Mason Temple when he said, I am happy. He said, we got some difficult days ahead of us. Yes, we do, Karen. How you doing? We got some difficult days. That simply means we got some hard time. We got some trouble time, and we're right in the midst of the difficult days. Death all around us, evilness all around us, hatred all around us. We experiencing some difficult days. Yeah, and both died right there at the mountain top. Moses died and was buried by God. King is entombed in Atlanta. So they died up on the mountain after they had made their declaration. Moses' declaration was the folk to trust in God. Martin King said, we got some difficult days. We got some hard times. But he said, I'm not worried about death. He spoke about dying. Said so certainly longevity has its place. But I want to live a long life like everyone else. But I just want to do God's will. I promise you, for God had took me to the mountain top. He's allowed me to look over and see the promised land. And I realized that I might not make it there with you. But as a people, as a nation, Martin King said, I'm here to tell you that we will get to the promised land. And I believe that, not because he said, because God is still in control. You see, they had their mountain top experience. There's so many great mountain top experience in the Bible. We got Mount Sinai, where Moses was given the law on the mountain top. We got Mount Carmel, where Elijah's God answer by fire. We got Mount Nebo where Moses saw the promised land. We got Mason Temple where Martin King saw the promised land. But I'm here to tell you that the greatest mountaintop experience was on Mount Calvary. Just like Moses was sent to save and deliver his people. Just like Martin King was sent to save and deliver his people, Michelle, uh, I know one that come down the 40 and two generation to save and deliver their people from illness, to save and deliver their people from dying, to save and deliver his people from destruction, to save and deliver his people from Satan trap. Do you know him? The, the, the greatest mountaintop experience. God 
so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son and he sent him to die on a hill called Cleverly. Let me tell you about Jesus, mountaintop experience. Do you know him? He water in dry places. He bread in a starving land. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He went up the hill called Calvary, where he whooped him up the hill. He never said a mumbling word. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And for me, he died. He died. The sun refused to shine. He died. The moon fell in blood. He died to heal my soul. The Bible said, with his stripe, we are healed. Yeah, the doctor give us medicine to heal our body. But it's Jehovah Rapha, God, my healer, that healed our body. They took him down, put him in a grave. They thought that was the end. But three days later, he rose again. Early, early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and in earth. He got up. Have you had? Your mountaintop experience. Have you experienced the joy, the love, and the peace? All right. You only get to the promised land by going through the wilderness. <clears throat> and I'm here to tell you, the last thing that you do before you get to the promised land is you got to go up a mountain. You got to come up the rough side of the mountain. You got to bear your burden in the heat of the day. Yes, go up the mountain. The climbing is steep. But if you're going to get to the mountain top, you got to come up the rough side of the mountain in the heat of the day. And at the mountain top where you have your experience, you come closer and closer and closer to God to finally you accept him as your Lord and your Savior. And there you experience the joy, the love, the peace of God that expresses all understanding. Moses had his mountaintop experience where he died on Mount Nebo where he looked over and saw the promised land. Martin King had his mountaintop experience at Mason Temple in Memphis, where he said God had allowed him to look over and see the promised land. Jesus had his mountaintop experience on his Mount Calvary, where he hung, bled, and died that we might live. Have you had your mountaintop experience where you have come into the glory the joy and peace and the salvation of our Lord? Or are you still in the wilderness? Are you, we, are you still climbing the mountain? The, yes, there's contentment down in the valley. There's peace in the valley. That because we take the mountaintop experience down into the valley, but we got to go up to the mountaintop first and have a unique experience with God. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Have you been to the mountaintop? And if you've been to the mountaintop, you will see the promised land. Not with your eyes, but with your heart. When you realize that there is a better place somewhere. David said there must be, there got to be a God. Somewhere. Amen. There's a God somewhere. Kenny Lewis and one boy. He made a way. Come on, put those hands together. He made a way. Kenny Lewis and one boy. He made a way. So as you celebrate Martin King Day tomorrow, think about the mountaintop experience and what it means to you. Moses, Martin King, Jesus, and your 
Thank you, Lord. Shout in. One more will for Kenny Lewis. He made a way. Made a way out of nowhere. Been through heartaches and pain. Been through so much, but he made a way. And he's going to make a way for us out of COVID according to his will. And to his will. We offer you Christ, the Son of the living God. He's on the mountaintop waiting on us. He's coming back. When he got up out the grave, he went home to be with God. But he's coming back for his church that has been to the mountaintop and experienced his joy. God will make a way. How many that God made a way for? He made a way. Come now. Give your heart to God and your hand to one of these pastor, preacher, teacher, teacher, deacon, and we'll make sure we get you where you need to go. Understand that God is a way maker. Sometimes when going, get walked. We holler, way maker, make a way. And he'll make a way for you. Just like he made a way for Moses, Daniel, and so many more. He'll make a way for you. You got to go to the wilderness to get to the promised land. And the last thing, you got to go up a mountain. You got to have that mountaintop experience that you can look over and see the promised land. All right. We can see that things are going to get better. And if they don't get better down here, there's a land that flowing with milk and honey on the other side. Heaven is my goal day by day because Jesus made a way. He made a way. And if you are out of the ark of safety, if you have not had that experience, that burning bush experience where we discover God, that mountaintop experience where we experience his joy and accept him as our Lord and our Savior, pray this prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner. I willfully and cheerfully, I disobeyed thy word. I go on contrary to thy will. Create in me a clean heart that I may serve you. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that thou art the Christ. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You are saved. God bless you. God keep you. Celebrate the holiday tomorrow. Rest, relax, and enjoy. But understand this. You must go through the wilderness. Yeah, we are in Egypt. All right. We, and we're on our way to Eden in that promised land. But we must go through the empty land, the barren land. We must go through the wilderness. the no other way to get to the promised land. And just like Moses had to climb his mountain to see the promised land. King had to climb his mountain, beaten in jail to see the promised land. We got to climb our mountain that we have experience with God. And then we will see the promised land. All right, share it with your friends, with your family, and with your network. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, all those sharing birthdays. Leonard Conway, Helen Conway, D. Barnett. Please keep our nation in our prayer. Amen. When you get the opportunity to sign up and take your vaccine, thank you, those of you that support this ministry. Thank you for your financial contribution. It's much appreciated. It's much appreciated. Please, man, please, sir, pray. Throw it into your own trade. So you pay your time. And then if you, if God bless you to sow it, excuse me, to sow this ministry, then do so. Amen. Stay safe. Mask up, America. Pray for this country. Pray for the incoming administration. Pray for the outgoing administration that they find the mountaintop experience. Amen. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer for you. Share this message. Please share this message with your friends, with your family, with your network. God bless you. Have a great day. And we'll see you Sunday, I mean Wednesday, with another message from God on high. To God be the glory.